I see how the preacher feels now. It does. That, that's nice. God is really blessing at Olive Branch Baptist, and we're so thankful. Uh, let everyone know the Brother Herbert and Miss Peggy are fine. They took a few days off, even though they had to cut their trip short because of some deaths in Greenville. Uh, he had already lined up Brother Mike, and we're excited to have Brother Mike here today, and you remember him. He filled in a lot for Brother Herbert during his time of need and surgery. And uh, actually, Brother Mike's wife, Miss Carolyn, is on our prayer list. We've been praying for her. But I told him I was going to have to ask. I left my paper. So I'm going to have to ask him. I know he, he's a career fireman. He was a fire chief and been married to your wife. 30 years. 30, isn't that, that, guy's, that guy knows how to answer the questions. We, we guys could learn from that. 30 wonderful, 30 wonderful years. Well, we're happy to have him and as the music service uh, finishes up, we ask that you come and let us know what God's laid on your heart. And we thank you for being here. On our prayer list, we'll start out with, we need to remember John Law Robinson's family. He passed away Friday night, graveside at Magnolia Cemetery on Tuesday, February the 28th at 9.30 followed by a visitation at the Evergreen United Methodist Church on Tuesday, February the 28th at 10.30 to 11.30. And then it's going to be a celebration of life and worship service following that at 11.30. And Miss Carolyn Phillips, Brother Mike's wife, has breast cancer and she's going for surgery Thursday and she we, she's been on our prayer list and we want to continue to pray for and for God's favor and will you got Mabry Cook that's found out that he's got cancer and uh, he's starting treatments talked by text with Mabry and he's very thankful that to know that we are praying church or praying for him and I know we're not the only church doing so. We got little Callie Stringer has got stomach issues. That's that's B Mall's granddaughter <laughs> uh, and mine. Uh, but she's having a little stomach issues, needs prayer. Got Mike Pettis, that's Doc's cousin. He's doing better, Doc. Had has got a lot of pain and had rods put in his back, but he's doing better. Continue to pray. And uh, Miss Carolyn Leonard that we witnessed being baptized last week, she starts a 12-week regiment of chemo, starts this week. And we got Dale Sims, chemo. We got Paula Strickland. As that's uh, Miss Higdon's cousin, and and, and their cousin. <laughs> And she starts treatment, so we need to have her uplifted in prayer. We have Kelly Bradley, cancer. Got Felix Andrews. Did anybody know about Felix? Uh, update or anything? He, he, he's home. He's home. This says he's in the Montgomery Hospital, but he's in the nursing home in Monroe. Okay, nursing home in Monroe. And he started talking a little bit. Great. Well, we need to keep Felix in our prayers. And if anybody around here has ever bought anything at a hardware store, you, you've seen Felix. You got uh, John Sellers, health, health needs, uh, had cancer. That's on Luther Upton brought that to us. And we got Brenda Bennett, heart valve replacement. Got June Stinson. And you don't have anything to say but praise, right? Right, I'm great. Thank you. June, June has praise for what God's done in her life. And Patricia Pugh's got chemo and fluid on her lungs. She's having chemo treatment by this. Darwin said that he's doing good. He's been back up on the roof. Ain't that pretty good? <laughs> And he thanks us for our, his, our prayers. Got Miss Pat Asbury, and Miss Pat Asbury is dear to a lot of us in here, and she's got cancer and not doing well at all. So we 
we worship a God of grace and mercy. Got uh, Rhonda Baggett, Doc's sister. Is that right, Doc? Pray for her. Pray for Craig Johnson. Uh, says here he's doing good. Buddy Nobles is, of course, Ricky's daddy and his mother, uh, Barbara. And she's looking to be released this week, right? Right. And Friday. And, and, and his daddy's had a couple of good days, so that's a praise. Uh, got Larry Oswald. Larry Oswald is here today. Where's Larry? And he has given new meaning to the word long COVID. He, he, he's just about, he just about got put under with, with COVID. He's had a hard time, having a hard time. Uh, he told me several times that he just didn't want to come in here and have one of them hacking fits because he has a problem, you know, keeping his, keeping his oxygen, keeping his air. But we're glad and there's a lot of hacking goes on in here. It's okay, Larry. <laughs> But we, we thank God for what he's done in Larry's life, and we need to continue to keep praying for him. Um, we got uh, Steve Moon. We've got a praise right here. It says that the C CT scan show that the tumor are shrinking and not spreading. Did praise? Right. The power of prayer. Yeah. And it's got a small spot on his liver, but not too concerned about that, they said. But Liz thanks us all for the continued prayers. Uh, God, and says God is good. So we got John Personi. Is that right, Luther? John Personi on Friday in Tom River, New Jersey. He is cancer-free. Amen. Amen. That's, that's some strong stuff. Donnie House, health issues. You got Danny Bond, the sheriff of Butler County, that's a dear friend to the preachers and was raised right there in Garland with Beverly and I. He, he's a good guy and he's having continual health problems. So we need to keep lifting him up. And he appreciates the prayers. You got Erica Robinson, cancer, blood clots, broken hip. You got Miss Mary Ann Taylor, still has health needs, but God's blessing in their life. We need to remember her and Brother Dwight. Got Wayne Carey with eye trouble. See, he's not here today. Uh, he needs he needs continual prayer. You got Evan L. Hawford. Yeah, said her arms are hurting some today, but she, she needs our prayers. And uh, she says God's good to her. Berlene Stuckey, Phil, got uh, Cecilia, Mac, is that Mac McCullough. McCullough, that's your cousin? She's doing better. She's doing better. God, God's really blessing. Hmm. So, lost my place. So, Gaynell Lynch, heart issues, and John Stubbs is back with us today. How about that? He said, he said don't quit. <laughs> don't quit praying. He still needs help. And uh, we certainly need to be faithful to that. Buster Wilson back issues Kathy Campbell Dalton how's Miss Kathy good amen thank you Danny Coven cancer Jerry Jerry Warren Lena Warren uh, got Tom Salo Tom's got uh, heart cath and possible stents Tuesday in Providence and Mobile we need to really lift him up and, uh, you know, we pray believing. He answers them. Said he would. Dwight Bennett, stroke and diabetic. Brother Hiram, Miss Jimmy Faye Beasley, health needs. And Jackie Skipper, healing of the feet and health needs. So. Paula Brock passed away too. 
I missed that. I missed that because I got to talking about him. Thank you. And the Paula Brock family. I apologize for that. You know, Lisa Jones and Al's been coming here, but we know the Brock family. We know Lisa and all them boys. And uh, they touch all of our lives in some way. And we really need to hold that family up in prayer. Anybody that ever lost a mother knows. So let's go. We got a big list, but we got a big God. Amen. Amen. Look, Ricky Salter. Yeah. Ricky Salter. and loving Heavenly Father we thank you first that we have the freedom to come here and worship your holy name and God I thank you for the spirit that's within this church and then this fellowship thank you for the people that are here thank you for the people that aren't here that's a part of this fellowship I ask a blessing on their life for whatever need they may have this day and Father I also want to mention the unspoken needs that's in this fellowship. We all have them. We all have needs. And thank God for the Holy Spirit. They can tell you about it. Father, for all these people that are on this list, we pray for your love and your compassion and your favor upon all these people. And we pray that your will is done in all their lives. We want to pray according to your will. But we ask, if it be your will, to show favor on these things and mercy where it's needed. Father, as we join together today in worship of you, we want to show you that when we had our call to worship, it was to get our attention to you, not yours to us. Father, help us. We all need you. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be here with you today. I appreciate the opportunity to be back. I know we always hate to see Brother Herbert gone. I know we do up at Southside. But I'm proud to be here with you this morning. If you got your Bibles with you today, if you will, turn with us to the book of 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 4. I want to look at a story that I'm sure we all are familiar with, but I want to visit again this morning. It's a little bit lengthy, but... I think we need to read the whole thing to get the gist of the message today. 2 Kings chapter 4, we'll begin reading with verse number 8. Now it happened one day that Elisha went to Shunem, where there was a notable woman, and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was, as often as he passed by, he would turn in there and eat some food. And she said to her husband, look now, I know this is the holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Please let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed for him there and a table and a chair and a lampstand so it will be whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. And it happened one day that he came there and he turned in to the upper room and lay down there. Then he said to Gehazi, his servant, Called the Shunammite woman. When he had called her, he stood before her, and he said to him, Say now to her, Look, 
You've been concerned for us with all this care. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. So he said, what then is to be done for her? And Gesei answered, actually she has no son and her husband is old. So he said, call her. When he called her, she stood in the doorway. Then he said, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, no, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. But the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come of which Elisha had told her. And the child grew. That happened one day that he went out to his father, to the reapers, and he said to his father, my head, my head. So he said to a servant, carry him to his mother. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, shut the door upon him and went out. Then she called her husband and said, please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come back. So he said, why are you going to him today? It is neither new moon nor the Sabbath. And she said, it is well. Then she saddled a donkey and said to her servant, drive and go forward. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. And so she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. So it was when the man of God saw her afar off that he said to his servant Gehazi, look, the Shunammite woman, please run now to meet her and say to her, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, it is well. Now when she came to the man of God at the hill, she caught him by the feet, but Gehazi came near to push her away. But the man of God said, let her alone, for her soul is in deep distress, and the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. So she said, did I not ask, did I ask a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, get yourself ready, take my staff in your hand, and be on your way. If you meet anyone, do not greet him. And if anyone greets you, do not answer him, but lay my staff on the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, as the Lord lives, as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So he arose and followed her. Now Gehazi went, went ahead of them and laid the staff on the face of the child, but there was neither voice nor hearing. Therefore he went back to meet him and told him, saying, the child has not awakened. Well, Elisha came into the house there was a child lying dead on the bed. He went in therefore, shut the door behind the two of them, and prayed to the Lord. And he went up and lay on the child, put his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, his hands on his hands, and stretched himself out on the child, and the flesh of the child became warm. He returned and walked back and forth in the house, and again went up and stretched himself out on him. And the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite woman. So he called her, and when he, she came into him, he said, Pick up your son. So she went out and fell at the feet and bowed to the ground, then picked up her son and went out. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the reading of your word today. We just ask that you'll bless this word. Open our hearts and minds to be receptive to the word that you have for us today in this scripture. Lord, I pray that your presence will just move here among us today. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Amen. There was a story told about a famous oil field out in West Texas that was known as Yates Pool. Back during the Depression, this field was actually a sheep ranch, which was owned by a man, you never guessed, by the name of Yates. Now, Mr. Yates was not able to make enough money on his sheep ranch to keep his operation running. He couldn't pay the, pay the principal and the interest on the mortgage that he had, and he was in danger of losing everything that he had. With very little money for food and clothes for his family, like many other people during that day and time, and today's day and time as well, he had to live off of a government subsidy. Day after day as he grazed his sheep over those rolling hills there in West Texas, 
he was no doubt, he was worried and he was greatly distressed about how he was going to be able to pay his bills and to take care of his family. Then one day, a seismographic crew from an oil company came into the area and they told Mr. Yates that they thought there might be some oil on his property. And they asked for his permission to drill a wildcat well to see if there was any oil there. So he signed a lease and allowed them to do that. At 1,115 feet, they struck a huge oil reservoir. It was giving off 80,000 barrels of oil per day. In fact, 30 years after that discovery, the government sent in a test crew to test one of those wells on his property and it showed that it could still flow 125,000 barrels of oil per day. The amazing thing was Mr. Yates owned it all. The day that he purchased that property, he also received the oil and mineral lights on that property. But yet, here's this man that's living there with all this property, with all these resources, on a government relief subsidy. In other words, here's this multi-millionaire living in poverty. So what was the problem? Well, the problem was he didn't know the oil was there. He owned it all, but he didn't possess it. And that's much like so many Christians today. They don't realize just how rich they really are, we really are, in Jesus Christ today. We've been blessed by God, and sometimes we just don't realize how well we've been blessed. In this scripture today, we see Elisha, this man of God, he was a prophet of the northern kingdom of Israel, and he traveled from town to town doing the work of the Lord. Now, Elisha had to rely on the Lord totally and completely to feed him and to take care of him and to provide for his needs. The Lord would always call somebody along the way to take care of him as he was going about doing his work. They would show him the hospitality that he needed. The scripture today begins with Elisha traveling to this small town called Shunem. Now today I want us to take a look at this, this woman from this small town of Shunem who needs a miracle in her life. And by her faith, she received those blessings or she received that miracle from God. Look, I'm telling you, we all need a miracle from God every now and then. We all need God's blessings in our life. We see that if we look at this prayer list this morning. And we see God at work on that prayer list here this morning. And that's because He is blessing these people. He is blessing this church. He blesses obedience to Him. Back during this time period, people would have to rely on the prophets, such as Elisha, in order to be able to hear from God. But aren't we thankful today we don't have to rely on the prophets in order to be able to hear from God? But since the time of Pentecost, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to us to do the work that the prophets had to do back during that day and time. We have that resource available to us. Jesus Christ provided that for us. So today as believers, we have the Holy Spirit who sheds the love of God grows the love of God in our hearts, increasing our understanding of what God has done and what He is doing in our lives. We also see in the scripture today how the Lord blessed this woman. He blessed her through the interaction with the prophet Elisha. Now don't miss that point. He blessed her through her interaction with the prophet Elisha. He blesses us today with our interaction with the Holy Spirit. Because Elisha is doing what the Holy Spirit does for us today. Now the prophet Elisha worked in the northern kingdom of Israel. He worked there in a time when the people were far away from God. So we wonder what was it about this particular woman, this Shunammite woman, that caused her to receive such a great blessing from God while she was living there in such a godless day and time. The Shunammite woman, she really wasn't anybody special. 
In fact, her name is not even recorded in the scripture. But yet she received this great touch and this great miracle from the Almighty God. Don't you know if God was able to empower the life of a nameless woman living in such a godless time that he can also touch our lives today? And there are four things this morning I'd like for us to look at in the life of the Shunammite woman. And the first thing that, that I want us to see today is that she wanted to make the man of God welcome. She wanted to make him welcome in her life. And we mentioned before, the prophets during that day and time kind of represent the Holy Spirit in our day and time. So she wanted to make the prophet welcome. Look, we need to be making the Holy Spirit welcome in our lives. From the very beginning of this story, it's obvious that this woman had a hunger and a great desire for God. We see that she was able to recognize God's man whenever he entered into the town. And immediately, what did she do? She invited him in. She invited him into her house. In fact, she just didn't invite him in. The scripture says that she persuaded him into her house. The woman, she was desperate to be of service to the man of God. She wanted to serve him. She wanted to please him. So what did he do? He obliged her. He came in for a meal. In fact, she looked after him so well that every time he was in town, he'd stop by. The woman understood this fact, that the more we know about God, the closer we get to God. Usually this makes us realize just how little we probably know to begin with. So if we really want to be empowered by the Holy Spirit in our lives, if we really want to know the full extent of his power, we must urge God to come into our house, come into our hearts through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now I know Brother Herbert's been preaching on the Holy Spirit, I'm sure <laughs> here for the last several weeks, just like he's been preaching at Southside for a good while on the Holy Spirit and how important that is in our Christian walk today. Look, it's our responsibility to make our hearts a place where the Holy Spirit wants to return time and time again. If this woman's house had been filthy, if it had been full of corruption, chances are that Elisha, he probably wouldn't want to come back there again. Maybe people ask God for his power today, for his presence. They expect him to come but they want to rest in their filthy hearts, never willing to make that change that needs to be made and clean some things up in their lives. Now, I'm sure all of us probably know if we, if we would admit it, that whenever we got saved, we had to make some changes. We had some things we had to clean out and get rid of. Uh, we just couldn't wallow in that same old pig pen and show up on Sunday morning at church and think we're going to be blessed. We got some things we've got to get rid of. This woman made her house clean. She made it ready and welcome for the prophet. We need to make our hearts welcome for the Holy Spirit so we'll come in. She made her house welcome. She fed the man of God. He wanted to come back there time and time again. But we see that she also made a room for him. After a life, she'd been coming to her house on a regular basis. She went to her husband and she said, look, we need to make Elisha a room. We need to make a place of his own so that he can not only visit with us, but once he comes to visit, he can just stay as long as he wants to. So she expanded her house. She builds on a room, she puts it up on the roof, and she equips it with all the basic things that he needs to be comfortable there while he comes to stay. The woman's desire is to have the man of God reside in her house, not only to bless her, but he's also going to bless her whole family. Let me tell you, when we let the Holy Spirit move in our hearts and life, the rest of our family, the rest of our friends, they're going to see that change. It can affect them, and that's important. Now the truth is, what she was going to do there it takes some time, it takes some money, it takes some effort on her part to build this room and to furnish this room. But this desire that this lady had to have the power of God dwelling in her house meant that it was worth it all. Look, if we want God's power 
to be permanently dwelling in our lives, then we need to stop and count the cost of that. It doesn't always come cheap. It's not always easy. Let me tell you, there are a lot of people out there today who desire God's power in their lives, but the sad fact is, he's got nowhere to stay. He got nowhere to stay. God wants us to expand. He wants us to add on in order to be able to take in all that he has for us. Look, he may want us to make a few changes in our life. He may want us to start getting up a little earlier every morning, maybe an hour earlier every morning and do a little Bible reading and a little prayer time with him before we get our day started. He might want us to be able to go out and share the gospel with that person that we're working with or we're around every day that he's put on our heart that you need to mention something to this person. Or maybe he might tell us we need to share something with that person we really don't think they want to hear from us. But if he leaves us, we need to follow. And thirdly, we see that this lady received God's promise. She made the preparation, she asked for it, and now she's receiving the promise. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says this, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. And that power is the power of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 says, But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the hearts of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. And the next three verses after that says, But God has revealed to them, to us through his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God, for what man knows the things of man except the spirit of the man which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Look, God blessed the Shunammite woman with more than she could have ever dreamed or hoped for. She was blessed because she had a desire to serve the man of God without expecting anything in return. Her primary motivation, her primary desire that she had was to simply and unselfishly serve God. Scripture says that while Elisha was resting in his room that he had a desire to bless this woman. But notice when he asked her what it was that she desired, what did she say? She said, I don't desire anything. I don't want anything. I don't need anything. She was content with what she already had. Notice her attitude here. The attitude she had toward God, it was probably a little different than the attitude we have most of the time. We usually want stuff. And she said, no, I got all I need. I don't need anything else. She understood what we so often forget that first and all, we are called to serve God, not for Him to serve us. Amen. Amen. Elijah even offered to go and speak to the rulers of the land on her behalf, but she refused, being content with what he had. So Elisha found out exactly what would, would bless this woman. Likewise, God will bless us in the same way. When we ask and we seek to serve him first. So often we don't make him number one on our list. He will bless us with the best gift we could ever have, and that's a new birth. I'm sure we all remember one of President John F. Kennedy's most famous quotes. We probably have heard it hundreds of times. <laughs> Ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Let me tell you today, I think it's still a great quote, but maybe it needs to be changed up a little bit. Maybe we ought to have a desire to, to, to tweak it a little bit. And we should ask, it's not what God can do for us, but God, what can I do for you? How, how often do we stop and ask him that? Lord, what can I do for you today? I know what I want you to do for me, but what can I do for you? It's in the midst of this seeking to make him welcome that God brought forth the, <coughs> this new birth to that lady. He brought new birth into the household of that woman. 
And lastly, she held on to that promise. She held on to that promise he provided even when it seemed to be dead. The woman who made a life she welcome in her home. She had added on to her house in order to make him a place to stay. And because of that, she had received a promise that was more precious than she could have ever even imagined. It was then that she also started to see that promise that he provided begin to grow. <clears throat> but we find that years later that the promise that God had given her had died. Her son that she cherished so much, the son that she thought she'd never have, had died in her arms. The woman had been given more than she could ever hope for, more than she could ever ask for, and now it had been taken away from her. She was broken hearted, her dreams had been shattered, and she was so disappointed. So what did she do? <clears throat> she took that child and she laid him on the man of God's bed. She didn't tell anybody else. She didn't mention it to anyone. And she ran straight to Elisha. <clears throat> Notice what she told her husband when he said to her, and he asked her, where was she going? He said, she's going to the man of God. And she said, it's well. It's well. But could there have been any other answer that she could have given other than it's well? The answer came from the disregard of the pain that she felt. The answer came from the determination of seeking she was seeking. She wanted to get to the one who could get to God. The answer came from the depths of her faith. See, no matter what the outcome was, she already knew that it's well. No matter what the outcome, it's well. Notice it was only when the man of God returned to the place that had been prepared for him that he solved the problem, and it was then that the promise was resurrected. Look, any one of us here today could have been in the same position where we have sought God and we have received God's blessings. The promise grew for a while, but then we see the promise die right before our eyes and it makes us feel helpless. It might have been some ministry that we was involved in, something we was trying to do, working for the church, working for the Lord, and it seemed like it's just faded away. Or maybe some friend or some loved one or some family member that was one to Christ, and now it seems like they have totally turned their backs and slipped back to that old way of living that they used to have. But the good news is this. Our God is faithful to his promises. He is able to do the impossible by raising up what appears to be hopelessly dead. Our God is able to provide the miracle. He can provide the miracle that we need today. We need to learn to be a little bit more like the Shunammite woman. Don't look at everything else around us. Don't try to solve all of our problems in our own strength. And how many of us try to do that first and foremost so often? Don't speak negatively telling everybody that the promise is dead. Instead, we need to lay that promise down in the resting place of the Holy Spirit and go straight to God himself. This woman grabbed Elisha by the feet and she refused to let him go. Look, we need to grab a hold of the Holy Spirit, go straight to God and don't let up. If our promise has died, we need to grab a hold of God and don't let go. People will try to push us off much like Elisha's servant, Gehazi did. But the God we serve looks at our distress, he looks at our suffering, he looks at our misery, he looks at our agony, and he wants to do something. He wants to intercede. Just as Elijah came to visit <coughs> the town of Shunem, let me tell you, God is coming to visit us. God is coming to town. But the question we have to ask this, when he comes, will our hearts be ready? Will we be ready like the Shunammite woman's house was ready? Will we urge him to come in and come to visit? Or will we just be content to let him pass on by like most of the rest of the town did here? See, God's power can move through a town. It can move through a nation. 
And when it does, there's so many, they just miss out. They miss out because they don't have a desire for it. They don't really want it. They haven't got their hearts ready to be able to receive what God's got available for them. See, it's all up to us to be seeking to serve God first and foremost in our lives. The truth is, God's power is coming. God's power is available. The question is, are we ready to receive it? Have we made preparations to receive it? Maybe we got some house cleaning we need to do. See, the Shunammite woman had her house ready. And the time come when she needed a touch, she said, it's well. It is well. Back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, a songwriter by the name of H.G. Spafford penned these words that we're all familiar with, probably sung them many, many times. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. And Lord, haste the day when the face shall be sight, the clouds be rolled back like a scroll, the trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Let me tell you, Jesus Christ is coming back. He's coming back. I don't know when. I feel like it'll be soon. He's either going to come back and get us or we're going to go there and meet him. But we're going, we're going to see him again one day. The question we have to ask ourselves, are we ready? Is it well? Is it well with your soul? Is it well with my soul this morning? As our song leader and piano player come this morning to lead us in a song of invitation, no one can answer that question but you. But we know that through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can be ready to respond when the Spirit speaks. When He speaks to us, we don't need to turn Him away. Prepare that heart, prepare that place, and just let Him in. If you're here this morning, you have a decision you need to make, we certainly want to welcome you to come as we sing. Appreciate you being here this morning. Appreciate you allowing me to come and be with you today. And I hope you have a, a blessed week this week. Brother Andrew. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Now, I don't think anybody's leaving here today that doesn't want to come to church. Amen. Amen. Amen.